Hello, I'm Dr. Satish Rao from the University of Iowa Carver College of Medicine. I am the lead author of this manuscript to be published in Clinical Gastroenterology and Hepatology. The title of our manuscript is Digital Rectal Examination is a Useful Tool in the Identification of Dyssynergia. My co-authors are Kasaya Tantiflachiva, Priyanka Rao, and Ashok Ataluri. As you all know, constipation is a very common problem. There are three major subtypes. Slow transit constipation, where propulsion of stool is slow throughout the colon. Irritable bowel syndrome with constipation, where abdominal pain is an important feature along with constipation symptoms. And thirdly, dyssynergic defecation, where there is major pelvic floor dysfunction. Patients with dyssynergia report symptoms of difficulty with defecation, such as hard stools, straining, use of digital maneuvers, and a feeling of blockage in the anorectal region. Often, these patients undergo physiological tests such as anorectal manometry, colonic transit study, defecography, and other tests to identify dyssynergia. However, we have a simple clinical tool that is a digital rectal examination. This bedside tool may be important in the assessment and in raising a clinical suspicion for a diagnosis of dyssynergic defecation. That was the focus of our study. Whether digital rectal examination can identify patients with dyssynergia is not known. We tested the hypothesis that DRE can be a useful bedside technique for identifying patients with dyssynergic defecation. The aim of our study was to perform a DRE in patients with suspected chronic constipation and compare our findings with objective tests such as anorectal manometry and balloon expulsion tests. We performed a detailed and meticulous digital rectal examination that consisted of three steps. We performed anal inspection, checked for anocutaneous reflex, checked for any anal fissure, and then carefully advanced a gloved index finger into the rectum. We assessed the resting sphincter tone and the squeeze sphincter tone. Then we had the subjects push and bear down as if they were going to defecate. During this maneuver, we looked for three important changes. The change or increase in intra-abdominal pressure, the change or movement of the index finger out of the rectum, which indicates perineal descent, and most importantly, the relaxation of the external anal sphincter and the puborectalis muscle. If all these three features were present, then it was unlikely that the patient has dyssynergic defecation. We subsequently performed anorectal manometry and balloon expulsion tests on these patients and compared the findings of digital rectal examination with the gold standard, that is, the manometric and physiological tests. 209 consecutive patients with symptoms of, of chronic constipation were enrolled in this study. 90% of these were women. These patients had symptoms for over 10 years on average. More than 80% of patients reported hard stools, difficulty with defecation, and about a third of these patients used digital maneuvers. Manometric tests showed that 183 of these patients, which is roughly 87%, had standard features of dyssynergic defecation using anorectal physiological testing. Of the 133 patients with a physiological diagnosis of dyssynergic defecation, 73%, i.e. 137 patients, were also identified as having features of dyssynergia by digital rectal examination. Thus, 
the sensitivity of DRE for detecting dyssynergia was 75%. Furthermore, the specificity was 87% with a positive predictive value of 93%. Thus, DRE was a good tool at the bedside for identifying features of dyssynergia. DRE was able to identify normal and squeeze sphincter tone in 86 and 82 percent of patients respectively. Thus, we found that digital rectal examination can be a useful bedside clinical tool for identifying patients with dyssynergic defecation. It raises the index of suspicion and proper recognition will allow these patients to be referred for appropriate physiological testing, which is clearly the gold standard of identifying these patients. Through proper diagnosis, these patients will receive appropriate treatment, such as medications or biofeedback therapy. Thank you for your attention.